Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. <laughs> it's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, everyone knows that our public school system is, of necessity, a carefully budgeted operation. And our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, has some very definite ideas on the subject of economy. Personally, I've always been a firm believer in economical living. As a school teacher, I've found that by budgeting my income, thinking ahead, and doing without certain things right now, I can count on other things later on. Little luxuries like food and shelter. <laughs> <laughs> but in the hands of Madison's beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, even economy can be carried too far. I was discussing the subject with my landlady last Thursday at breakfast. So Mr. Conklin has launched another economy drive. Drive isn't the word, Mrs. Davis. It's more of a crusade. You might not believe this, but he's rationed each teacher to one piece of chalk a day. <laughs> That's ridiculous, Connie. What do you do when the chalk wears out? I wet my finger. <laughs> I was teaching Shakespearean drama late yesterday afternoon, and by two o'clock I was up to my cuticle in Twelfth Night. <laughs> that's terrible. Oh, that's nothing. Today I have to stop in Mr. Conklin's office for my weekly pencil. You mean to tell me he only gives you one pencil per week? You don't get that unless you bring in a small bag of shavings. <laughs> My goodness. What in the world does Mr. Conklin do with pencil shavings? I think he smokes them in his pipe. <laughs> <laughs> At least I hope he does. I've been mixing in chopped rubber bands with mine. <laughs> Well, if you ask me, Connie, I'd say that Osgood Conklin was penny wise and pound foolish. If you ask me, I'd say he was all foolish and a yard wide. <laughs> and his judgment's so poor. Remember the idea I had a few months ago to get a tape recorder in school so the students could play back the recordings of their own voices? Yes, indeed. I thought that was a wonderful idea. When I told Mr. Conklin about it, he suggested I take an aspirin. Now I read where it's being done in high schools and colleges all over the country. I know it. Walter Denton showed me a spread just the other morning where some college professor came out and said taping was a great aid in learning English. Walter was all excited about it. It wasn't the learning part that excited Walter. He's just gadget happy. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there, Connie. When it comes to anything mechanical, that boy is a genius. He must be. He's kept that car of his running for five years with the wheels held on by blue jay corn plasters. <laughs> oh, well. That reminds me, dear. Walter phoned while you were in the shower and asked me to tell you that he won't be able to drive you to school this morning. Oh, fine. But you can borrow my car, Connie, if you don't mind picking it up. Oh, where is it, Mrs. Davis? In the garage next door to school. <laughs> Somehow I get the feeling that this isn't going to be one of my better days. Oh, thank goodness I'm on time. Now I can take my... Well, this is a switch. Pupil beats teacher to classroom. What are you doing here so early, Walter? I thought your car broke down. No, ma'am. I just had something else to attend to. Now then, if you'll just read this, please... What is it? I'll tell you in a minute. Meanwhile, just read it aloud. All right. In my opinion, which is shared, I am sure, by students and faculty alike, he is a generous and progressive-minded leader who will spare no expense to improve the teaching methods in our high schools. There, it's finished. What's finished? What's this box on my desk? Well, it's a Webster Echo tape recorder, Miss Brooks, and I have just captured for posterity your true opinion of our principal. My true opinion... My true opinion... <laughs> As I was saying when I so rudely interrupted myself, my true opinion of our principal would melt the tape, Walter. But where did you get this machine, anyway? I got it from Larkin's electrical shop. Mr. Larkin said we could use it for an indefinite trial period with absolutely no obligation. No obligation? 
Well, just a small obligation. What is it? We have to buy it. <laughs> yeah, he's going to call Mr. Conkin on the phone about it later today. I don't like to start teaching before class officially begins, Walter, but you have just used two words which cannot possibly fit into one sentence. What words? The words by and Conklin. <laughs> He'll never authorize an expenditure like this. Why, I've got to go into an emergency conference with him this morning to see if I can get another pencil. You know if he's in his office yet? Sure, he got here early today. Fine, then I'll pack up my shavings in my old kit bag and run along. <laughs> Miss Crooks, if you see Harriet Conklin in her dad's office, would you kindly waft her my way? Ere the humdrum rigors of another school day begin, I long to gaze upon my delectable Delilah. Uh, I'll send her down, Walter, but be sure to keep your cap on. Remember what happened to Samson. <laughs> I'm furious, Harriet. Absolutely furious. Why are you furious today, Daddy? Because of the way this... I'm not sure I like your tone, girl. <laughs> are you inferring that your father is in a constant state of ill temper? Oh, no, Daddy. I think you have a very healthy temper. That is, I, I know how hard it is for you to control your nerves sometimes. I have perfect control of my nerves. <laughs> it's a wonder I have any nerves left. <laughs> I think the done around here... Look at this lamp. Yesterday, I ordered a repairman from Larkin's Electrical Shop to come out and fix the wiring. Look what he did. He simply taped it up and left. It looks all right to me, Daddy. Well, it doesn't look all right to me, Daddy. <laughs> on top of that, the blundering dolt left a note saying I owe him $3.85. Now, that takes plenty of, uh, plenty of gall. <laughs> Daddy, why should you be so upset? Doesn't the Board of Education pay all our school's expenses? Yes, yes, Harriet, it does. And that's one of the reasons for my crackdown campaign on waste. Mr. Stone, the head of our board, dropped in on me the other day and informed me that any principal who couldn't run his school with an absolute minimum of expenditure would be removed from office. But, Daddy... I am not a rich man, Harriet, and you and your mother have to have food and you have to have clothes. Constantly. <laughs> I can't afford to jeopardize my position here. That's why I've got this ball of tape on my desk. I'm going to fix some other loose wires I saw in the hall myself. Yeah, well, come in. Hello, Mr. Conklin. Harriet. Hi, Miss Brooks. Samson's waiting for you in my tent, Delilah. A classroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'll run along now, Daddy. See you at lunchtime. I'll be counting the minutes. <laughs> Now then, Miss Brooks, you may step forward to my desk and briefly state your business. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Miss Constance Brooks reporting for her pencil, sir. Request denied. <laughs> you have our permission to withdraw. But your majesty... Uh, Mr. Con... <laughs> I don't understand, uh... This is Pencil Thursday, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. But during the past week, two board erasers have been lost from your room. However, we'll discuss that as soon as I take care of that wiring in the hall. Uh, but, sir... Uh, just be a minute. Go oh, answer that, please. Yes, sir. Hello? Principal's office, Miss Brooks speaking. You ain't the principal, are you? No, I ain't. I'm an English teacher. <laughs> Mr. Conklin's out in the hall at the moment. Who is this? Oh, this is Larkin of Larkin's Electrical Shop. I let Walter Denton take an echo tape recorder over to your school this morning on a trial basis. All I want to know is, doesn't Mr. Conklin want it or don't he? <laughs> Frankly, I doesn't think he do. <laughs> him if you want me to. Yeah, do that. Will you tell him it's only $385? What? It's a steal at $385. Tell him that. Well, I'll step out to the hall, Mr. Larkin, but I'm sure all I'll get is the exercise. Excuse me a minute. Sure. Uh, uh, just ask him what about the tape job. He probably knows all about it already, maybe. 
My partner's out for coffee now, but he might have already phoned Mr. Conklin before I got here about it already. I perfectly understand. <laughs> uh, phone the hold, please. I mean, hold the phone. <laughs> uh, uh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, Mr. Larkin of Larkin's Electrical Shop is on the phone. Larkin? What does that pirate want? It's about the tape. I know all about it, and you may tell Mr. Larkin for me that I recognize my obligations and will pay, albeit reluctantly, what he asks. You will pay? But, Mr. Conklin, do you realize it will cost... I know, I know, I know. Three eighty-five. dollars Tell Larkin to send the bill to Mr. Stone's office at the Board of Education. But, sir... Go, Miss Brooks. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Are you still there, Mr. Larkin? Hey, sure. What did Mr. Conklin say? Well, I think he's delirious, but he said you're to mail the bill to Mr. Stone at the Board of Education. Oh, swell, but I won't have to mail the bill, Miss Brooks. The board is right down a block from my place. I'll bring the bill over to this here Mr. Stone when I go out to lunch. Well, that's about all we got to discuss, I guess. Thanks for everything you've done, Miss Brooks. Oh, I only done what I had to done. <laughs> that is, I only done what I should have did. Uh, <laughs> give me a ring sometime and we'll go to night school together. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, I could hardly believe that Mr. Conklin actually had okayed the requisition for a $385 tape recorder. When lunch period arrived, my bewilderment and I joined my favorite biology teacher, Philip Boynton, in the cafeteria. It is amazing, Miss Brooks, in view of Mr. Conklin's recent attitude toward expenses. Maybe he's becoming a little more sensible about economizing. Not Mr. Conklin. He couldn't have changed that fast. Why, he's the only person I know who ever sent in nine cents to the March of Dimes. <laughs> it's certainly contradictory, especially in view of his action toward me this morning. What did he do to you? Well, he stormed into my lab, announced he was cutting me off without a penny for frog food. I... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you liked frog food. <laughs> oh, forgive me, Mr. Boynton. I shouldn't tease you about your animals. I know how attached you become to some of them. How's McDougal these days? Oh, Max, fine, thanks. But I I'm a little concerned about a new frog I caught in the meadow last week. It's a wonderful specimen. I've named him Shamrock. He weighs almost two pounds. That's a good-sized shamrock. <laughs> well, he he's healthy looking enough, but I, I think he's mentally upset. He's so lethargic. Yes, I'm almost certain that this frog is the victim of some deep-seated frustration. You see, I, I've practically psychoanalyzed him. Must have used a very small couch. <laughs> Maybe he resents being cooped up in the laboratory. Well, that's the conclusion I reached. He's probably longing for his native surroundings, a pond, flowers and trees, but... Well, before I decide definitely about taking him back to the meadow, I'd like very much for you to meet him, Miss Brooks. All right, Mr. Boynton, but only on one condition. What's that? That you tell him in advance it's strictly platonic. <laughs> Are you still tinkering with that recorder, Walter? Yes, ma'am. There's one switch here has me a little confused. I can't tell whether it's on or off. Uh, let's see here. 
Well, I got it figured out now, I think. Uh, did you have lunch with Mr. Boynton? Yes, I did. Then I stopped in at the lab to meet one of his friends, a new frog named Shamrock. Oh, I know Shamrock. Kind of a mope. How'd you like him? He's all right, I guess, if you like slimy, bulgy-eyed, pot-bellied monsters. <laughs> you don't sound very enthusiastic. Oh, I can tolerate his green little jowls at a distance. It's only when he jumps into my lap that I want to scream. <laughs> Pardon me, Miss Brooks. May I come in? Oh, certainly, Mr. Boynton. It just seems like minutes since last we met. That's all it's been. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Walter. Hi, Mr. Boynton. Uh, what do you got in that jar? Shamrock. Oh, what have you decided about him, Mr. Boynton? Well, I've come to the conclusion he doesn't belong in a school. I think I'll take him out in the woods somewhere and toss him into a pond. Toss him into a pond? Mr. Boynton feels that Shamrock isn't happy here. He just can't seem to adjust to city life. Well, why not? I think it's the fault of television. He's probably jealous of Hopalong Cassidy's success. <laughs> oh, it's just that he's lonesome, Walter. Say, I've got an idea. Maybe we can get him to croak into this microphone, and when we play it back, he'll think it's another frog and fall in love with it. Now, that's a fine thing to do to a frog. What good's a tape recording on a cold night in the swamp? <laughs> no, no, Walter may have something there, Miss Brooks. It might cheer him up considerably. The only trouble is Shamrock would recognize the call as that of a bullfrog. Why don't you play him the cry of the wild goose? Maybe that'll send him. <laughs> No, no, what he needs is the croaking of a female. Miss Brooks, I was just wondering... <laughs> well, you can stop right now. I don't want to give myself the best of it, but I don't think I'm his type. <laughs> I, I merely wanted you to hold the jar for a moment, Miss Brooks. You see, by turning down the bass on this recorder and bringing up the treble control, we might fool him. You could fool me. Hey, I see what you mean, Mr. Boynton. It'll play back higher. Here, I'll turn it on. Oh, it is on. Uh, just hold him up to the microphone. Come on, boy. Let's have a nice, clear call. Oh, come on, Shamrock. Let's have it. Right into the mic. What do you suppose is wrong, Miss Brooks? Maybe he doesn't like the script. <laughs> what do you think, Walter? I wish he'd croak. No, I'm afraid he isn't going to do it, Walter. Better turn it off. Okay. There, it's off. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call nice timing uh, Pardon me, folks, but I have to speak with Miss Brooks for a moment Oh, certainly, Mr. Conklin What's wrong, Mr. Conklin? Am I overdrawn on my paper clips? <laughs> Word has reached me that you were seen filling your personal fountain pen with school ink <laughs> Is this true? Guilty as charged. But I can't understand this excessive economizing on little oh, things when you you're Oh, you can't. Going to... You can't. Well, you'd better try harder, Miss Brooks. When I've finished tightening up around here, Mr. Stone will have no unnecessary expenditures charged to my account. I, uh, hello, what's that on your desk, Miss Brooks? It's a tape recorder, Mr. Conklin. A tape recorder? Yes, wh why don't you step up and try it, Mr. Conklin? Yes, why don't you? Your voice should record beautifully. Oh, uh, well, it uh, has been said that I possess a certain resonance of tone. <laughs> How, uh, how does the thing work? Here, I'll show you. Uh, Mr. Conklin will now say a few words about the head of our school board, Mr. Stone. That's all there is to it. Then when you push this button here, it plays back. Listen. Mr. Conklin will now say a few words about the head of our school board, Mr. Stone. Simple, isn't it? Go ahead, Mr. Conklin, say something. Oh, but I don't have anything prepared. Oh, I just say a few nice words about Mr. Stone. Yes, yeah, something that'll soften the jolt when the bill arrives. Uh, well, I'll, I'll improvise something. I, I have known Mr. Stone for many years, and in my opinion, he's... Soften the jolt when the bill arrives! <laughs> what do you mean by that, Miss Brooks? Please be calm, Mr. Conklin. It was your idea to send the bill to Mr. Stone. What bill? The $385 bill for this tape recorder. $385? I never authorized anything of the sort. But surely you remember Mr. Larkin calling about it this morning. So Larkin is at the bottom of this. That scoundrel. Well, what's wrong with Mr. Larkin? He's a crook. He ought to be on the rock pile. If I ever get the opportunity, I'll have that conniving wretch run out of town on a rail. But, Mr. Conklin, you told me yourself to have Mr. Larkin send the bill to Mr. Stone. I was referring to a bill for some tape he put on my office lamp. A bill for $3.85. Tennis, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ruined. When Mr. Stone gets that bill, he'll come charging over here like a wounded buffalo. 
I can almost hear him growling my name. Osgood Conklin. Yes, it's almost as if he were in my presence. What's the meaning of this bill? I can picture the scene as vividly as if he was... Oh, hello, Mr. Stone. (laughs) Don't hello me, Osgood. What's this $385 bill for? Uh, Well, sir, it's like this. I, um, that is, we, um... May, may, may I present Miss Brooks? She can explain everything. Well, Miss Brooks? Likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. Stone, this tape recorder was delivered here because, well, may I present Walter Denton? <laughs> he knows more about the matter than anybody. Let's have it, Denton. Yes, sir. Well, when I saw this machine in Larkins, well, I was just sort of standing there and... Uh, you, have you met Mr. Boynton? He charged. <laughs> What's this all about, Boynton? Uh, well, this is, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh this is Miss Brooks. <laughs> we met! <laughs> Please, Mr. Stone, I know you have a right to be I'm angry, I'm not but... angry, Miss Brooks. I, I'm jealous. Jealous? Yes. I wanted to be the first one to introduce tape recorders into our local school system. They're a boon to modern education. I'd give a lot to know the identity of the progressive-minded individual who first wanted one for Madison. Uh, Mr. Stone, it is with great reluctance, born of innate modesty, that I reveal my role in the matter of this tape recorder. Your role? When uh, when I first got the idea... When you first got the idea? Why, I told you about using tape recorders in schools three months ago. Uh, No, 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 Miss Brooks, let's not wash our soiled linen in public. Why not? It can use it. (laughs) You see, Mr. Stone, although Miss Brooks is one of our best and oldest teachers... In point of service, he means. (laughs) She still hasn't been able to adjust herself to the rather stern but just discipline with which I operate this institution. Personally, I'm afraid she rather resents me. How can you say that, Mr. Conklin? Uh, Quiet, you. Let the boy talk. Oh, gosh, only this morning, Miss Brooks recorded a beautiful speech about Mr. Conklin. Uh, why don't you play it back for Mr. Conklin, Walter? Yeah, I'm not interested. Yeah, I... I am. Any matter that involves the relationship between one of our principals and a member of the faculty is the board's concern. Play the record, boy. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, what do you think of Madison's principal, Osgood Conklin? He's all right, I guess. If you like slimy, bulgy-eyed, pot-bellied... <laughs> What? I can tolerate his green little jowls at a distance. It's only when he jumps into my lap that I want to scream. Osgood Conklin. The speech I made about Mr. Conklin, Walter, you played the wrong one. I mean, find the right one. I've heard quite enough, thank you. Well, I haven't. It's very enlightening to know how the faculty feels about you, Osgood. No, it's all a mistake, sir. We're all very fond of Mr. Conklin. Walter, play the right spot on that tape. Okay. I think this might be it. What have you decided about him, Mr. Boynton? I've come to the conclusion he doesn't belong in a school. I think I'll take him out in the woods somewhere and toss him into a (laughs) pond. A pond? You... That's a mistake, too. Shut it off, Walter. Don't touch that machine, boy. I want to hear more of this. What do you think, Walter? I wish he'd croak. Ah, ha! Oh, ho! Miss Brooks, Mr. Stone, I deeply regret this unseeming exhibition, that this unholy triumvirate should choose to expose their flagrant disrespect for me in your presence is a cruel blow indeed. They know how I admire and respect you, sir, how I cherish your friendship. Oh, be quiet, Oscar! (laughs) Boy! I want to hear everything that's on those records. Yes, sir. Mr. Conklin will now say a few words about the head of our school board, Mr. Stone. He's a crook! (laughs) You ought to be on the rock pile. If I ever get the opportunity, I'll have that conniving wretch run out of town on a rail. Are my ears playing tricks on me? Did I just hear what I thought I heard? Play it again, Walter. We can all dance to it this time. (laughs) Please, please, Mr. Stone, your ears were playing tricks on you. This is all a horrible nightmare of misunderstanding. Not another word, you... you slimy, bulgy-eyed monster. (laughs) You forgot (laughs) pot-bellied. 
You keep out of this. Mrs. Stone. I'm going back to the board and file my report. You've not heard the end of this incident, Mr. Osgood, ex-principal Conklin. Well, Miss Brooke? <laughs> Suicide, anyone? <laughs> Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap... Better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, we all made a hurried trip to the Board of Education and finally convinced Mr. Stone that he had merely been the victim of a comedy of errors and not any malicious mischief. Accordingly, when we returned to school, Mr. Conklin was so relieved that although he held me responsible for the incident, he only loaded me down with enough extra bookwork to keep me from walking home from school with Mr. Boynton for the next three weeks. When I returned to my classroom, Walter Denton greeted me at the door. Well, Miss Brooks, I got the machine all fixed. Now you can make the right speech about Mr. Conklin and getting good with him again. Are you ready? I'm ready. Good. I'll start the interview. Miss Brooks, what do you think of Madison's principal, Osgood Conklin? He's all right, I guess, if you like slimy, bulgy-eyed, pot-bellied monsters. Next week, turn into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help top tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, Lester White, and Joe Quillen, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials using nothing but palm olive brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you lovelier complexion in 14 days. Our American economic system accounts for the highest standard of living in the world. It has brought more people, more jobs, better pay, shorter hours, and more purchasing power. But you can help make it still better by learning more about our American system. Write today for the free booklet, The Miracle of America, which explains simply how by working together, a still better living can be had by all. The address, Box 10, Times Square Station, New York City. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.